Today we are going to see um, the second part of the state space form. Um, we, are, we need to find <coughs> the up, so-called output equations and we need to find out the C and the D matrices. So that's the topic of today's lecture is find the C and the D matrices. Now in order to do this um, I am going to remind you about this example that we were working on last time and uh, maybe make some comments uh, about it. So um, we, we have this situation here. We have this simple suspension system that you see here and we have the we have drawn the bone graph model on on top of this on top of the system in red here and in here you have the process that we went about using to generate it so in case that we need to uh, do this um, we redo a just to remind you we laid out first the one junctions for the uh, distinct velocities then we attach the elements that move at those velocities which are this and that and this and this and that and then we created the zero junction to represent the difference in velocities so between this and this created that one between this and this created this one and then finally we attach the elements that experience the difference in those velocities there okay um, so let's say uh, this let's see how we're going to do now the upper equations in this case we have to identify some output equations something that we want to monitor in our system and so the C and the D matrix have to do with the outputs so let's let's just figure it out for ourselves which uh, uh, you know some of the outputs here and perhaps I would just do like for example I, if I want E10 in here as an output I, so I'm just going to write the equations for that so E10 as the output and I, I could find E10 just like I found the equations the differential equations it turns out that E10 is very easy because it's 1 over C sub 10 and Q sub 10 this is the equation of this output and there could be other uh, equations for the other outputs that might be uh, a little bit more um, involved than this but maybe if we if we do like for example um, uh, let's see how do we could try an E7 just to E sub 7 is the force acting on this mass this E sub 7 is E5 minus E sub 8 right 5 minus E sub 8 and then E5 is E3 and E3 is E4 so this is E sub 4 and then E sub 8 is the one on top here which is E9 and E9 is E10 plus E11 see you could derive this equation like that and so the um, so in this case you you will have E sub 7 is equal to E sub 4 which is this 1 over C sub 4 Q sub 4 and then minus in this case E sub 10 is 1 over C sub 10 Q sub 10 and then minus R11 times F11 now it turns out that F11 is the only one that we need to expand in here that we don't know very well so F11 is going to be uh, F9 see but F9 is going to be F5 minus F sub 8 uh -huh. but in here F sub 
a5 is a3 and this is f um, f3 is equal to f4 uh, yeah so this is no f5 is f f1 minus f3 this is f1 minus f3 the f1 which is f2 minus f3 Mm. Yeah, this is SA five. Um, this is SF one minus what F of three is. Uh, in this case equal to s of 4 but this is where do we have this in here it's not hopefully we don't have a mistake so let, let's go back f11 is f9 right f9 is f8 minus f sub 12 Okay. Yeah, see I, I I somehow I messed up the numbers in here. So why don't we just erase this for a moment? Uh, I think we made a mistake so F eight minus F twelve is what it is. See, see what it is? It's F9, right? It's F8 minus F12. That's that. Uh, that was my problem here. Yeah. This is F sub 8 minus F sub 12. And then F sub 8 is F sub 7. And then F sub 12 is F14. There we go. I'm sorry we had a little mess up in there this F7 is the 1 over I sub 7 P sub 7 and this is minus 1 over I14 P14 and so if we substitute that in the equation down here we will have the the whole equation for the output that we're looking for this e sub 7 huh? so let's do that e sub 7 then is equal to 1 over c sub 4 q sub 4 minus 1 over c sub 10 q sub 10 and then minus r11 times this so it would be over i sub 7 p sub 7 and this other one would be uh, minus times minus is plus r11 divided by i14 times p14 these two equations that you have in here I'm going to encircle them this one right there and this other one in here those are the two output equations that we are after and those are the ones that we need to put into matrix form as well just like we did the ones below here we put the derivatives in here the states vector in here the outputs over here and we we fit these derivatives in this case we have two output equations we are going to have only two rows where on one row is uh, the, the output is e10 and the other one is e sub 7 so I am going to write it down like this let's just um, make it in here this is uh, e sub 10 and then this is e sub 7 and now we are going to 
have the matrices here that we that we need like that we have two rows this is going to be the same state vector like this and then plus there is going to be another matrix like this and it's going to have the vector of the inputs in here so I, I think I'll be consistent with um, the same order of these state variables and the same order of the inputs so I am going to write it down in here this would be a P14 and then you have a Q10 in here and then you have um, P sub 7 in here and you have Q sub 4 over here and the, the, the sources we had AC13 and then we had this this other one which would be SC6 and then we have this SF1 okay very good so now we have to concentrate on the equations to uh, to write them down see over here 1 over C sub 10 Q sub 10 that's all it, all it is one, so this is going to be 0 here Q10 is whether 1 over C sub 10 and the other two are going to be zeros see and it has all these three also zeros because you need to reproduce this equation this equation that I'm saying the output equation like this by um, multiplying this row of this matrix times this so if you do that it reproduces that equation because we we are doing it from the equation now here in here we need here E7 is it has terms in all four of them like the first one is P14 is R11 over I sub 4 so E sub 7 uh, so this is uh, R11 over I so 14 I think it's I think it's that that's what it is right on the yeah here on the right hand side then the term on uh, Q10 is minus 1 over C10 minus 1 over C sub 10 and then you have the other term uh, is about P sub 7 right here is this one minus R11 over I7 so minus R11 over I7 and then you have um, Q sub 4 which is this one 1 over C sub 4 1 over C sub 4 like that and then I, does it have any sources here? No. So this this is other uh, three zeros here. But the state vector and the input vector need to stay like this. Need to have all the rows and all the columns that it needs to have. Otherwise, we'll be making a mistake. So this this matrix here is called the C matrix and this matrix over here is called the D matrix so the we saw the format up here this format that you see here is uh, this format is is this you know, and then um, you have the um, x dot equal a x plus d b u but this one here we can also write in the same way this has this form y is equal to the matrix C times the vector x of the state variables P 
plus the matrix D times the vector of inputs U. So in conclusion, this whole, both of these are called state space form. State space form, you will say of the system, system equations, because I say system equations because we have uh, differential equations but also these algebraic equations that are the outputs. So the state space form is always, and this I want you to keep in mind, is always x dot, the derivatives, multiply by the matrix like this, times the input vector like this, plus the um, matrix D um, B times the input vector U and then on to complete Y is like this in fact in Simulink you are going to see a block that has exactly this format that I am writing it's because um, in that block is contained the entire system. So this form that you see here, this 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 one right here, is called state space form. And we have derived now the A, B, C, and the D matrices. That is how we we have done it by hand in this case. To, um, uh, just to remind you, in the case of of the A and B matrices, we found expressions for the derivatives first. We derived all those, and each one of the four equations that we derive is one row of these matrices. See, we found a, an expression for this derivative, and then we wrote it into matrix form. Expression of this derivative on the matrix form uh, in, in a row matrix. So we, we multiply this row by this column and should reproduce equation number three. You multiply this row by this column and you add this, should reproduce equation number four. So um, that's, that's how this works. And then you will um, have a, this form for the A and B matrix, where this is the, these are the derivatives, the A matrix, the state space vector, and then you have the B matrix times the vector of the inputs. But on this one in here, you have the outputs. <coughs> this is the C matrix, this output matrix. And these are the state variable vectors. So again, by the same token, if we multiply this by this, and this by this, you reproduce equation number one for output E sub 10. And if we multiply this by this, and this by this, should and add should reproduce the second equation for output E sub 7, which is this equation. So this way, what, what, I, what we can conclude is that this set of this representation in here and of the differential equations plus this set over here of the output equations is what we call state space form. So <coughs> We can address any questions about that now, but uh, in essence, it boils down to this notation. And that notation is going to be uh, very, very well done in the, uh, in very well represented in the Simulink uh, rep rep block diagram representation. Okay. So, why don't we just uh, stop now and then we'll We'll do that in a separate... Uh